a very warm afternoon to all my dear students and welcome to the lecture of advanced accounting and auditing paper 6 i am professor shorya shah welcoming you all to the lecture of ty bcom semester 5 accounts 6 hope every one of you are doing well dear students in the last lecture we started with the university sums of your ratio analysis chapter right again Today we will be solving the set of university sums only. These are the mixed sums from the paper of VNSU 2018, 2010, 2013. Fine. I hope everyone, most of you have understood the sums in the last lecture and I suppose there are no queries in it. Fine. Today also we will be moving further. I hope now everyone must be very much familiar with the chapter and you must be clear with the formulas also fine. So a complete different set of sums we will be doing today related to your TYBCOM. We will be starting with the question number 12 students as you all have the sums in advance only. Question number 12 is your VNSU 2018. What is it all about? First of all, it is a short sum again, right? What we solved in the last lecture, similarly, it is of your same pattern, fine? So what is the sum all about? What is given in it? We'll understand the sum first as usual and then we'll be starting with the actual solution, fine? So first is your current ratio is given. Current ratio is 3.5 is to 1, okay? Liquid ratio is given students 4 is to 1. Working capital is 75,000, a bit similar sum we have already solved in the previous lectures. Again, we will be looking forward to it. Stock is three times of bank overdraft, right? So again, a equation is given that stock is three times of your bank overdraft. So we will be considering this equation and then we will be solving it. What you need to calculate students, you need to calculate current assets, current liabilities, liquid assets and liquid liabilities, fine. So as I always tell you, always start with the information which is actually given in the sum, fine. So we'll be starting with the amount of working capital first, right. What do you mean by working capital students? It is current assets minus current liabilities. Before we start with that, let us assume any one of the equation or one of the amount which you are finding as x, right. So what I assume here is let current assets is equals to x for me, right. So I suppose that current asset is x and so current liabilities will be as you can see my current ratio is 3.5 is to 1. So I can assume that current assets is my 3.5x and current liabilities are my x because we are assuming 1 that is equals to x fine. I hope it is clear to each and every student fine. So we will be moving forward with the equation of working capital. What is the equation of working capital students? You all know working capital is equals to current assets minus current liability. Everyone agrees with that? Fine, we have solved the sums. So what is it? 3.5x minus x is equals to the value of working capital given in your sum is 75,000 rupees, right? So what I'll do is, I'll solve this. So 75,000 is equals to 2.5x because 3.5 minus x is 2.5x, right? So I'll get the answer when I'll divide this x is equals to 30,000 rupees. So if my x is equals to 30,000 rupees, what will be the value of my current assets and current liability, right? So I'll be calculating accordingly what will be the value of current assets and current liabilities. What is my current assets? Current assets students is equals to 3.5x is equals to 3.5 into 30,000, right? And now we'll be going a bit quick students so that you understand the points and we can cover more sums. 3.5 into 30,000. So I'll be getting the value of current assets as 1,5,000, right? So 3.5 into 30,000. So 1,5,000 rupees is my value of current assets. Hope it is clear to each and everyone. The first thing which is asked in the sum we have sought. The second thing is the value of current liabilities, right? So current liabilities is equals to x. No much effort in that. So x is equals to 30,000. So again, I'll be getting the answer of current liabilities as 30,000 rupees, which can be directly given. Is it clear to all the students? 
so out of four things we have calculated two things now what else they have asked they have asked liquid assets and liquid liability how can we move on to liquid assets and liquid liability on the basis of the liquid ratio liquid ratio students what is it liquid assets upon liquid liabilities or current liabilities if there is no bank code fine so i'll put up similarly in the formula what is my liquid ratio 4 is to 1 now keep in mind students 4 is to 1 is equals to 4 only fine so 4 is equals to liquid assets now what do you mean by liquid assets liquid asset is my current asset minus stock liquid liability is my current liability minus bank overdraft here in this sum specifically it is said that bank overdraft is there right students so we need to deduct it so again 4 is equals to current asset i have found out 1 lakh 5000 minus stock now stock i am not having students fine but i can assume any one of them with the help of this equation stock is three times of bank od so let us assume stock to be again stock is three times of bank od right so we will assume bank overdraft as x always assume the lower one as x and stock is three times of your bank overdraft so i'll assume this as 3x right i hope it is clear so 1,5,000 minus 3x upon current liability is 30,000 minus x, right? Assume, you can assume any of the way, but the thing is you always assume x as your lower value, fine? So stock is your 3x and bank OD is x. Now when I solve this, 4 is equals to 1,5,000 minus 3x upon 30,000 minus x. So you can solve this 1,20,000 taking this on LHS minus 4x is equals to 1,5,000 minus 3x. I suppose it is clear. So when you solve this completely x is equals to 15,000 is the value I am getting right. So x is equals to 15,000 value I am getting. So what is my x we assumed? We assumed x is equals to bank overdraft, right? So x is my bank OD here. So what will be my stock? My stock will be 45,000 rupees. 3x is equals to 45,000 rupees. What is it, students? This is my stock. So when I get stock, so I'll get the answer of my two remaining things that is liquid assets and liquid liabilities also, right? So I'll just calculate it quickly. What is my liquid assets? Liquid assets is equals to current asset minus stock. What are my current assets? Current assets are 5000 minus 15,000 minus 45,000, sorry. So I'll get the answer of 60,000 rupees. That is my liquid assets. What will be my liquid liabilities similarly? current liabilities minus you have your bank overdraft current liabilities minus bank overdraft so what is your current liability students current liability you are having is 30,000 minus your 15,000 is bank overdraft so you will be getting the answer of 15,000 rupees right so this is your liquid assets and this is your liquid liabilities is it clear everyone this is the four mark sum or three mark sum which is asked in your exam repeatedly so you need to be clear with this part i suppose it is clear to each and every student fine okay now moving on to the next sum the four things you need to understand students once again telling you current assets is one like five thousand current liabilities is thirty thousand liquid assets is sixty thousand and liquid liabilities is fifteen thousand Am I clear to all? Fine. I hope you all must have also solved it simultaneously. Fine. Putting the missing thing in the equation which is already given in the uh, sum, you can find out. Fine. Now, 5 seconds to note down the sum. If you have not yet done it, those who have done it, kindly again check your sum. Fine. I hope it is done now. Now moving on to the next sum students that is your question number 13 right. Question number 13 is again VNSU 2018 two years back it was asked in your exam what is the question all about a easy question I can say. 
find out the rate of return on investment from the following details right finding out the rate of return till the time i'll just write it down you can read it find out the rate of return on investment from the following details what has been given in your sum students details of capital employed is given how much is capital employed capital employed is 30 lakh i can see right next is given turnover to capital employed again a new ratio you can find out turnover to capital employed is your five times net profit to sales is given eight percent right so how to proceed further right because this is a kind of sum which we have not seen yet so starting with the very first thing always the thing which you are having comparing to your two particulars so here turnover to capital employed ratio is given right so we will be starting with the turnover to capital employed ratio only so please write down what will be the formula whatever they have given you can write it down fine so i'll be beginning with the turnover to capital employed ratio please write down turn over to capital employed turnover to capital employed ratio is equals to whatever they are saying please write down turnover or sales i can say right turnover is as good as sales for me divided by capital employed turnover or sales divided by capital employed so you will be getting the two things which you are having in the sum turnover is given how much is my turnover i am not having it right so i'll put x here capital employed i am having it 30 lakh rupees the answer of this ratio itself is given it is five times right so i suppose it is clear to each and every student so what we'll do is you need to multiply x that is equals to sales or we can say turnover 30 lakh into 5 gives me the answer of 1 crore 50 lakh right i suppose it is 30 lakh 30 lakh multiplied by 5 so it gives me the answer of 1 crore and 50 lakh rupees right very carefully put up the zero students there will be six zeros no mistake in that so sales i have got the very first thing is your 1 crore 50 lakh rupees on the basis of this my next step will be to calculate this in your net profit ratio fine so what is my net profit ratio net profit to sales is 8 percent net profit to sales is 8 percent so i can calculate net profit out of my sales right so that is 8 percent so what i'll do is 1 crore 50 lakh rupees into 8 percent that will give me the answer of net profit right how much will be my net profit you can calculate it my net profit will be 12 lakh rupees so now i have got the answer of net profit why we are finding net profit students we are finding net profit so that we can find out the rate of return on investment which is actually asked in the sum fine so this is one this is i term it as two we have found out two answers now the third in the main thing whatever they have asked we will be directly putting up in the formula what is it they have said calculate the rate of return on investment so i'll put up the formula of rate of return on investment i hope you all must remember the formula rate of return on investment rate of return on investment is equals to you can remember the formula very quickly what is it it is your net profit upon net profit upon capital employed on investment means it includes everything students right so net profit is i have found out just now 12 lakh rupees capital employed already given in the question that is 30 lakh so 12 lakh upon 30 lakh into 100 right so what you will do is dividing 12 lakh divided by 30 lakh into 100 so you will be getting an answer of 40 percent right so that is the final answer which is asked in your exam so 40 percent is my 
रेट ऑफ रिटर्न आई कैन से रेट ऑफ रिटर्न ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट राइट सो रेट ऑफ रिटर्न ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट इज फोर्टी परसेंट आई होप ईच एंड एवरी वन इज क्लियर विद दिस पार्ट ऑल्सो सो दिस इज अनदर शॉर्ट सम विच इज आस्ड इन यूर पेपर ऑफ वी एन एस यू टू थाउजेंड थर्टी थ्री मार्क्स थ्री मार्क्स सिक्स मार्क्स यू हैव ऑलरेडी स्कोर आउट ऑफ फिफ्टी फाइन सो इफ यू आर क्लियर विद द कॉन्सेप्ट यू आर क्लियर विद द फॉर्मुलाज यू कैन वेरी क्विकली सॉल्व दिस टाइप ऑफ सम्स फाइन अगेन फाइव सेकेंड्स नोट दिस डाउन एंड अगेन चेक योर सम फॉर दोज हु हैव नॉट कंप्लीटेड येट देन विल बी मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट लॉन्ग सम i hope everyone now done with the sum will be moving on to the next sum students what has been given this is again uh, only uh, some particulars are given on the basis of that you need to find out three things right so we'll see what is it all about this is your vnsgu 2010 question number 14 of our sequence right so we'll be starting with that part this is vnsgu question number 14 vnsgu 2010 10 right what has been given in the sum students kindly check it the very first thing you can see is you are finding out stock turnover ratio you need to find out stock turnover ratio what is the formula for that stock turnover ratio is equals to cost of goods sold upon average stock operating ratio so what is the formula cost of goods sold plus operating expenses upon your sales fine what is net profit net profit upon sales into 100 so this three things we need to find out for that you have been given seven particulars right now the very first particular is your closing stock is 50% of opening stock the first particular itself both the things are missing so what you will do is you will first assume right some of the things as x purchase are eight times of opening stock so first closing stock is assumed on opening stock second purchases are assumed on opening stock third sales are 15 times of opening stock okay so everything is given is on assumption of opening stock only adjusted purchase right keep in mind students what do you mean by adjusted purchase adjusted purchase is nothing but your cogs right so i'm writing it here you can also note this down what do you mean by adjusted purchase adjusted purchase is the another name of cogs so that is 60% Purchase expenses are given, operating expenses are given. Okay, fine. So that is enough for me. So how can we begin the sum? For every kind of equation which is asked in the sum, you have to calculate certain things first, and then you can start, right? So one thing I can found it out in one to three adjustments is opening stock is common base for all the calculation, right? So we will assume opening stock as x, and then we'll be start calculating various missing things which is asked in the sum side, right? So let us begin. What will be the first thing? Let us assume opening stock. Let opening stock is equals to x, right? I am simply finding out the missing particulars, and then we will be starting with the actual formulas. Opening stock is equals to x. So with the first particular itself it says 50% of opening stock is my closing stock so my closing stock is 50% of x so if it is 1x then it will be 0.5x right i'll be going a bit slow with this so that you understand so my closing stock will be 0.5x right next thing is purchases are eight times of opening stock purchases are eight times of opening stock so my opening stock if it is x purchases will be 8x sales are 15 times of opening stock so sales are 15 times of opening stock so this four basic equation i can make out from the particulars which are given right now what only thing i am having is adjusted purchase adjusted purchases 60% right so i'll write down adjusted purchase is equals to cost of goods sold right for your understanding i'm writing is equals to 60% 
Now always remember students what is this cost of goods sold on what it is calculated it is always calculated on the basis of your sales right so 60% of what 60% of sales now sales is the missing but we are having this figure so what I'll do is 60% of 15x right so kindly calculate 16 to 15 percent so I'll get the answer of 9 right so what I'll do is I'll again write down adjusted purchase is equals to 9x we are simply assuming the things so we will be writing this down right so adjusted purchase is also I'm having 9x purchase is 8x closing stock 0.5x and opening stock is x is it clear till here everyone fine next thing you have been having now I can find out gross profit also right so what is GP I told you we have solved the sums also sales is equals to sales is equals to cost of goods sold plus GP here sales is 15x cost of goods sold 9x plus GP so I will find out deducting it GP is equal to 6x right so that is also the thing which we found out now we will be just putting it in the equation from the uh, amount which we are having and then we can find out the things right I suppose it is clear to each and every student fine now the only amount which you all are having in this sum is of purchase expenses right now the purchase expenses is the only thing on the basis of which you can find out the answer further right so what we'll do is we'll put up where it will be useful it will be useful in the formula of cost of goods so right cogs is equals to opening stock plus purchases plus purchase expenses right opening stock plus purchases plus purchase expenses I hope everyone is clear with this part fine minus closing stock opening stock plus purchases plus purchase expenses minus closing stock is it clear to each and every student fine I am having the value of COGS that is 9x I am having the value of opening stock x I am having the value of purchases 8x purchase expenses I have been given in the sum that is 20,000 rupees so purchase expenses also I have written I am having the value of closing stock also right so what I can get is by solving this I will get the answer of x particularly right so just solve it it will be 9x 9x and 0.5x right so you will solve it by dividing so 9x minus 9x plus 0.5x is equals to 20,000 you hope it is correct okay now this this will cancel right so 0.5x is equals to 20,000 what I'll get is the main value of x that is 40,000 because 20,000 divided by 0.5 gives me 40,000 rupees right is it clear now once you have got the answer of x it will be very easy for you to calculate the further values right so directly we'll be putting up in the working only now you have got the x so again writing it is has no meaning x is equals to 40,000 your opening stock closing stock is 0 0.5 that is your 20,000 rupees here also we found out that closing stock is 20,000 Purchases is 8x. So 40,000 into 8 gives me 320,000 rupees. Right? Is it clear? Next is sales. Sales is 15x. So 15 into 40,000 gives me the value of 6 lakh rupees. Right? So what is the value, students, of my sales? Sales is my 6 lakh rupees. So write down here 6 lakh rupees. Cost of goods sold is 9x. So 9 into 40,000 gives me the value of 3,60,000 rupees. Is it clear to each and every student what is gross profit? Gross profit 6 into 40,000 is 2,40,000. So finding out the missing value. Don't get worried in the exam that only information given is your purchase expenses and so on and so forth. No. 
everything is given you just need to apply your mind apply your formulas and on that basis you can find out fine so i am having now every detail which i need for calculating the sums fine so we will be starting with the very first thing what they have asked is your stock turnover ratio so kindly please write down the formula for stock turnover ratio the first thing asked in your exam that is str is equals to cost of goods sold upon average stock directly i'll be doing it cost of goods sold i am having the answer what is cogs i have found out 360000 divided by average stock average stock also directly you can find out 40000 plus 20000 divided by 2 so i'll get the answer of 30000 rupees as average stock I hope everyone clear with that part 40,000 plus 20,000 divided by 2. So I'll get the answer of 30,000 rupees, right? So average stock 30,000. I will get the answer of 12 times 360,000 divided by 30,000. So 12 times is my first answer for this sum. Is it clear everyone? Fine. I hope everyone is practicing along with me only so that it is done. 12 times is the answer of stock turnover ratio right now the second ratio which is asked that is operating ratio right so again operating ratio write down the formula students operating ratio operating ratio is equals to what is my operating ratio the formula for that is cost of goods sold we all know that plus operating expenses cost of goods sold plus operating expenses divided by your sales cost of goods sold upon operating expenses divided by sales into 100 right cost of goods sold operating expenses divided by sales into 100 so i'll just put up the uh, things which are there with us in the formula cost of goods sold we use it in the previous sum also previous formula also plus operating expenses is 60,000 given in the sum itself divided by sales sales also we have found out 6 lakh so into 100 when you solve this you will get the answer of 4 lakh 20,000 divided by 6 lakh into 100 that gives me the answer of 70 percent right Hope you all must also be getting the same answer. So operating ratio is 70%. Don't forget to write down the units, percentage or rupees, whatever the case may be. And the third thing they have asked is NP ratio. Net profit ratio. Right students? So what is the formula for net profit ratio? Net profit ratio is your net profit after tax net profit after tax divided by sales net profit after tax divided by sales in 200 now net profit after tax you are not having students right you are just having gross profit and after that you need to deduct the operating expenses also and you need to deduct the tax also right so directly i'll be doing it here only gp minus operating expenses op expenses is operating expenses minus tax at 50 percent tax rate is also given in the sum if you can see tax rate is 50 percent and divided by sales remains the same right so putting all the figures gp we have found out right how much is gp 2 lakh 40 thousand that's why i told you earlier all the calculations completed and then you can start with the sum operating expenses is 60 thousand as you can see now 50% students tax is to be calculated on this both deducted amount right so 240000 minus 60000 into 50% so your tax will come to your 90000 right don't make the mistake on calculating 50% on either this amount or this amount no your amount will come wrong fine so calculate tax on the basis of net profit before tax so final answer you will be getting when you divide this by sales into 100 is your we can say 15% right 
टू लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड माइनस सिक्सटी थाउजेंड माइनस नाइन्टी थाउजेंड डिवाइडेड बाई सिक्स लैख सो यार आंसर कम्स टू स्टूडेंट्स फिफ्टीन परसेंट दैट इज माई एन पी रेशियो दैट इज आस्ड इन द एग्जाम आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू ईच एंड एवरी स्टूडेंट फाइंड नो डाउट्स इन दिस पार्ट सो वॉट यू नीड टू डू इज यू नीड टू रिमेंबर द फॉर्मुलाज फर्स्ट इन योर टी वाई बी कॉम यूनिवर्सिटी एग्जाम सच टाइप ऑफ सम्स विल कम फाइन वेर समटाइम्स एज वी सॉल्व इन द लास्ट लेक्चर द बैलेंस शीट इज गिवन फ्रॉम दैट बैलेंस शीट यू नीड टू कैलक्युलेट द वेरियस रेशियोज आउट ऑफ इट फाइन समटाइम्स दिस काइंड ऑफ पर्टिक्युलर्स विल बी गिवन आउट ऑफ दिस पर्टिक्युलर्स यू नीड टू कैलक्युलेट द वेरियस रेशियोज फाइन एंड समटाइम्स मिसिंग फिगर्स विल बी गिवन सो आई होप एवरी वन इज क्लियर विद दिस पार्ट so again this three sums practice it one more time at your own convenient time students do practice more learn more so that you will be clear with all types of sums you are having fine students that's all let's conclude it for today's lecture we'll be continuing in the next lecture with set of more university sums of vnsgo 2018 paper do practice more post any queries if you are having in the google classroom we are here to solve your queries any point of time that's all from my side students this is professor shoresh shah teaching you advanced accounting and auditing paper 6 take good care of yourself thank you for your kind cooperation for the lecture take care students see you in the next lecture soon